All right, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens in some of the sparring footage you've seen. So Zion and I are just gonna have a bit of a conversation just to explore some of the, the possibilities and some of the mechanics of what, what's happening. So if I, um, if I think about the approach that I've had so far, there was a lot of moving in into measure with a cut. So I come in here in an attempt to provoke some kind of response. If he steps back, then I'm not really gaining anything here. And look at how he's framing. So he's already crossed the line aggressively and the point is forward. So if from here, if I just, my natural thing to do would be to cut over to the other side. Let's see what he's doing. He's immediately intercepting that and cutting to my arms. Because as soon as I leave this bind, I, I have no protection basically during this time. He's not going to just stand there. So as soon as I leave the bind, he has a number of options. And I need to be, be cautious of that. What else can I do? If I wanted to go high risk, high reward, I would try to go for the leg. The problem with that is I'm very exposed right now. So if he, if he steps back, if he's quick enough and sees that, there's nothing really protecting me here. Okay, so what other options do I have? From here, I can try to win the bind, basically. So if I try to wind up, he's gonna respond to that. If he just stood there like this and did nothing, okay? Sure, if he does nothing, I'm just going to wind and thrust him. But why would he not respond? Of course he will. So if I try this, he's going to cut to the hand. If I come close enough, I could try to grab it, go for a thrust. And this is difficult to do in sparring, because don't forget, this is going to take me some time. This is an action. He has an action. Again, we can't assume that I have action points while he doesn't. So anything I do, he's going to respond to. If I try to push the blade over, he disengages, comes down with a shield how to my arm. What else can I do? A better thing to do here is disengage, do back zone, and try to go for a thrust. Again, he's going to respond to that. So what you just saw him do is step back and throw a false touch cut to my hands. That's why you see a lot of kind of back and forth and moving around and sparring because I don't want any of this. So I need to be, I need to be careful. What I'm used to is feint and cut. So for example, let's say I'm here, I move in, let's say with an undercut, feint, boom. Let's say I'm on the other side. Feint, it's work. There we go. So there's nothing bulletproof that I can do here, at least that I'm seeing right now. So keep in mind, this is not supposed to be like, this is the one and ultimate only thing. You should never do anything else. We're just exploring. All right, we're comparing notes. So I have to really be worried about his point because he can easily thrust here. And watch what he does. The bad way of doing this, the amateur way is just, uh, just in like this, guess what? If he just walks in like this and thrusts, he's gonna get thrust, but he's gonna get, be cut at the same time. But that's not what he does. What he does is this. So here, my arm is, is basically trapped by this. Meanwhile, you have to imagine he's, he's running me through. So he, he's getting closer. So I've got nothing here and then he can grapple, all right? So that's the that's a sensible way to use a thrust against the cut. Boom, right here, I'm walking onto his point. So if I notice this in time, say so stop here and I push over, and this is quicker than what I'm used to. He pushes it aside against my thrust. I come over here. It's good, but guess what? It takes a lot longer. This takes way longer then just disengage and thrust. This is really quick. You want efficiency. You want to reduce as much unnecessary movement as possible. And that's what happens here. So, okay, what else can I do? Typical thing is clear the blade. So, boom, 
and then come in. Notice he's, he's stepping back. If he just stood there, boom, yeah, I can do whatever I want. But he's not going to. And now he's got the thrust right here. I've seen a lot of comments along the lines of, you just gotta go in and just, just kill him, just cut him. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in and just... <laughs> no, it's not happening. He does not have to allow that, you know? Any kind of big sweeping cuts, boom, like Montante style, <laughs> I'm gonna get cut to pieces. Because he's not a salt statue just standing there like, cut me, bro. One of the quickest things I could do is this. Again, it's not impossible to defeat, nothing is. So if he's quick enough and sees that, he's got this. Okay, how about from there? Just, uh, just as an example, so for here, he catches that. Then he comes in with a thrust. I catch that. I'm gonna come on top. Boom. So this is how things can, can evolve. If I'm here and he thrusts suddenly, I don't have enough time because his thrust is quicker than my attempt to, to push it aside. So if I'm gonna set it aside and I catch it just a little too late, guess what happens? Because he's crossing the line so aggressively, it's coming in and I push it over, but not far enough to prevent it from going into my shoulder, for example, or the left side of my chest. And also with the, the binds, if I'm really hard in the bind, I don't want to let him do anything. Okay, he comes around there. So, right there. So if we come to a bind in the first place and, and knock it aside and then come in here, even if you move back, if I keep chasing, I may be able to get it, but here's the problem. It's high risk, high reward. You could still cut me. What I do, once I've got this frame, I essentially glide down and straight. Doing this. Now, when I do this, he's going to react. He's going to flinch in some way, right? If he flinches strongly, I come up and around like this. Or I can come like that and underneath, which is what you see a lot in this farm. The other option too is I can straighten down and depending on how he responds, I now have my options. If he tries to wind up high in this, I now strike to the hands again. If he stays strong, I now strike down behind his blade because he's only concerned about defending himself at that point. So if I displace that even more aggressively, so I space it here, he comes around, I got got to go even further over here, so yeah. that opens up this, this entire side. And again, the quickest thing is this. Yeah. So if I displace this, and this is what he wants. He wants to keep me in the nach, meaning the the after. So he wants me to react instead of actually seize the initiative, yeah. because then I can't threaten him. If all I do is just windshield wiper, yep. just to defend myself, then he. I'm, I'm absolutely no threat to him, so I, I need to do something else, right? I need to figure out an opening. That's where a lot of things are easy to miss in sparring. Attempts to cut at the arms that are being evaded. They look like you're just trying to strike the opponent's blade or you're just slicing the air or whatever. Like for example, if I, let's say, let's say we are in a bind here, I want to cut his arms and he steps back. This looks like, in sparring, this looks like I'm just, I'm just cutting the air, I'm doing nothing. But he defended, he evaded. So that's easy to miss. This is a situation I really don't want. Because he, he, has, a, he has a strong dominant overbind here. So he can do things to me that I don't want. So I need to do something to take it back. So I need to do something about that blade. In some kind of way, I need to make sure that this is not a threat to me. What about the, the single-handed thrusts? We, we had those a couple of times. Yeah. This is again a kind of a high-risk, high-reward maneuver. Let's say he's in, he's in Fool's Guard. All right, so I know that this is accessible. But let's say we're a little too far away, so I can't get him like this. If I thrust like this, he's just going to move back, okay? So he's just going to move back. But... I might be able to just quickly do this. So even if he moves back, I might still be able to get him. 
The problem is, if he sees us in time, I've got nothing. I immediately lose control of the sword. So, high risk, high reward. What if I want to stay on the other side and try to take control here? I might be able to get stab a knee or something, but it seems unlikely. So, this is just a weaker position for me to be in. So, I can try to get this in a, get a more favorable angle, but really, if he's over there already, I'm definitely better off going to the other side, but he doesn't have to accept that. All right, so that's, that's where we get all this. These are just some observations. Like I pointed out in another video, it really depends on kind of the interaction between different styles. If we're both more cutting oriented, it's going to look a lot different. If we both, you know, come in, boom, boom, it's going to look quite a bit different if it's not as focused on the bind and thrusting and, and etc. But yeah, this is some of the um, mechanics behind what you saw in sparring. So hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and thanks Diane.